السلام عليكم بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Oh, I feel horrible It says, please do not touch the mics and that was the first thing I did Let me put it back All right. With the topic of this afternoon regarding the trust of Islam and when we read the description of the topic it's regarding da'wah and being proud as a Muslim and how to convey it to others. And inshallah, the way I'll be delivering it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through five tips regarding da'wah and handling this magnificent heavy load of trust Allah has given all of us here in this room, inshallah. So are you guys ready, inshallah? Say inshallah. Inshallah. Number one, you have to believe that conveying the message of Islam is your job. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Baligu anni walaw ayah. He says, convey about me, even if it's one verse, one hadith, one statement, tell people about it. Go tell the one that you saw making sajda, prostration. How is the camera? Okay, perfect. The one who was making sajda like this, is that right or wrong? Wrong. How is the right way? Yes. You should not make this touch the ground if you're making sajda, correct? So if you see someone doing that and you know for a fact that you learned it in Sunday school at the halaqa, in the masjid, your parents, they told you, and you know this is the right way to go this way, you should tell them. So we got that task, inshallah, with utmost respect as we add more tips bi idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second matter regarding handling this amana and giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to realize when you do that, it will help you out. One more time. When I advise people to become more practicing, when I advise people to correct their actions, I become a better person. Just like how we learn, if you wanna master something, what do you do? You teach it. One more time, if you master something, you teach So if you wanna master something, you teach it. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. For example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, have mercy on those on earth, then Allah will have mercy upon you. Allah says, forgive others, then Allah says, He will forgive you. Allahu Akbar. So when I help someone, I end up helping my own self. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to give you an example, he said, the example of the one who fulfills the commands of Allah and the one who does not is like a group of people divided into two going onto a ship one group goes to the top the ones that know the right from the wrong pretty much and then the ones that go in the bottom does not know much so when they go to the bottom anytime they want water they go to the upper deck to throw the bucket get the water and use it at one point the people in the lower level of that ship they said we don't want to disturb the ones on the top we don't want to irritate them, you know, we'll give them some peace. So how about we drill a hole into the lower level of the boat? Can you imagine that? Drill a hole? What's going to happen to the ship? It's going to sink. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if the ones on the top, pay attention, if the ones on the top do not stop the ones in the lower level, they will all drown. And if they stop them from drilling the hole and they assist them, they will all be saved. So therefore, when you tell the guy to make sense and go this way, it's not just his salah becomes better, our jama'ah as a whole becomes better. This person now teaches his children, who is your children's classmates. You see how it's a full circle, subhanAllah. Not just that, even under the second tip is to motivate you to give da'wah is how you will benefit, even from ajr, hasanat wise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And every time you hear that name, say what? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Man da'a ila huda. Whoever calls people to guidance to the truth. And that person ends up doing it. You, the caller, you get the reward for their actions. And their actions will not be reduced in reward for them. Allahu Akbar. 
how many of us in this room, without even the need of raising hands, you all would, many of us would love to have passive income, right? You want to sleep, you have income coming in, you want to go on a vacation and you get that deposit in your account because some rental property that you have, you love passive income, it's just so beautiful. But to get it, you have to put a lot of effort. Similarly, you want passive hasanat, passive hasanat income. So you do this work, you write this article, you do this video, you upload it, you share it, you advise, and every time while you're sleeping, you're eating, you're vacationing, you're getting hasanat. Why? Because of that person you advise at the workplace. Allahu Akbar. So don't just think of dunya, but also think of the deen and akhirah. Lastly, under that second tip about how this motivates that there will be benefit for you, is that if you really want to physically look beautiful, it's in da'wah. Look, I don't understand. How can that even make sense? This is like a halal makeup tutorial. All right. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Nadar Allahu imra'an, authentic narration. He makes dua, Ya Allah, make the one so beautiful in the eyes of the people. Make him so beautiful. Who is it, Ya Rasulullah? Man sami'a minna hadithan faballagahu kama sami'a. The one who hears from us a statement and he conveys it the way he heard it. Allahu Akbar. So when you narrate a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, you will look better. Qala Allahu Ta'ala, one, two, and three, you will look better. So Subhanallah, we think, may Allah make, protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that there's no nur behind these stuff sometimes, right? Like, oh, being religious doesn't mean I take care of my physical features and so on and so forth. No, and not just you should, even da'wah itself, that's the reward of giving da'wah. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make us beautiful inside and outside. So number one, what was it? It's our job to convey, even if it's one verse. Number two, remember the reward that you get when you call people to Allah. Number three, make your da'wah, convey this amana, this trust within your capabilities. The call of giving da'wah does not mean you come to this main stage. It doesn't mean that you have to give Friday khutbahs. It's much more than that. Just if you noticed, the session was slightly postponed. Did you notice a little bit? Was it a bit delayed? What was the issue? It was a mic issue. Do you think I fixed it? No way. It was some group of wonderful people in the back. May Allah bless them. They fixed it. Someone else had to put this uh, projector. Someone is now recording us. May Allah grant them that which is best. Someone right now, if you guys don't see it, I can see. There's a timer. I have 12 minutes, 47 seconds left. So it's a, what, what, just, what am I trying to say? We all have a job to do. So we all complement each other. And don't limit da'wah just to public speaking. It's a lot bigger than this. Every single one of you here, young and old, male and female, just recently been practicing or for the longest time, every one of you is gifted. You have to truly believe in that. I'm telling you, I'm gifted and you're gifted and all of us is gift, are gifted. But what many of us have not yet done is unwrap the gift. You're special about something. May Allah allow us to know what we're best at. Say, I mean. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to conveying in the best of abilities, the people get inspired by him. And I'll share with you one story. There was a German boxer, a champion at, during his time, in which he was invited to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, to be honored for his achievements. That was many, many years ago, more than 20 years ago. And then he came to Riyadh, they honored him, gave him a prize and everything like that. And there was a sister in the gathering, she was a Niqabi sister, and she really wanted to see, can we give him da'wah? Like this guy is so influential. She noticed perhaps that no one is really being very much involved. Her capacity and capability at that time was to do what? Give him a Quran translated into German language. So she said, here you go, sir. This is a Quran translated into your language. He took that book. Who's the narrator of the story? The boxer. But let me tell you when. He says, I went back to Germany 20 years later. I was cleaning my library. And then as I was cleaning all the books, I don't want this, I need this. I came across that book and I remembered this was given to me by some Muslim lady in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. They didn't say much except give me this book. So I said, you know, after he retired, I got the Quran and start reading and start hitting his heart. Start to read and start to get impacted. Start to read and start to get convinced until he went to the Islamic center in his city in Germany and he asked, how can I become Muslim? and he accepted Islam. What did he do the next day? Next day, he set up a table in one of the busiest spots in his city. What did he have on the table? 
He had pamphlets. He had books. He had ma ma matters that of the deen to tell people about La ilaha illallah. So whoever sees him, all what they want is a selfie. True story. Oh, can I have a picture with you? He's like, yeah, sure. But on your way out, please take this with you. Take this with you. Take this with you. In one year, how many people accepted Islam? 104. 104 people accepted Islam from that brother. All of that reward is in whose scale? That sister 20 years ago in Riyadh. Allahu Akbar. So you never know that seed that you drop, how much fruit it will bring about. So number three, you go within your capabilities. You're a physician, you have an office, you have a waiting room. Bismillah, they put GQ magazines. We don't know GQ magazines. Tell me some beautiful Riyadh Salihin book maybe. Maybe something about who is Jesus in Islam. Stuff that we really appreciate. Maybe something creative. May Allah reward all of you who try to do that which is best for Islam. Say Ameen. Within your capab capabilities. Number four out of five, convey and give da'wah with humbleness and respect. It's very important to deliver it with utmost akhlaq. Allah says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن Allah says, call people to the path of Allah with wisdom and kind advice. And if you want to have a discussion or a debate, then make sure it's with best of manners. Allahu Akbar. This is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah is teaching us. Look to this wonderful, scary, but optimistic hadith in the same time. He says, bad character ruins the deed, the action, the same way vinegar ruins the honey. I never tried putting vinegar in honey, but I trust him. If you put vinegar in honey, it ruins it. Even if I never tried it or you never tried it. We believe in Rasulullah But that's how your action is ruined. The good stuff you're doing by doing it in a bad akhlaq and bad character. For example, let's say, actually true story, I was in another very far away city and there was a brother who was setting up the chairs for the lecture. Wonderful brother, a big, he has a big family, he works very hard, a full time, uh, work in one of the big corporations. He's coming on a Sunday, volunteering the hours, beautiful guy. But the manner in which he was talking to the remaining volunteers was very demeaning. He said, get the seat, bring the chair, what's the matter with you? Fat, you're so slow, bro. I should have never called you. Like, you see how? Why? You're doing a great job, and this behavior ruins all your sacrifices. You were, you were better off staying at home doing nothing. May Allah forgive us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, here we learn to do it in the best of akhlaq. Rasulullah in one of the beautiful examples, he sent a group of the Sahaba because there is a people around Medina, they're trying to spy. There's a lot of enemies towards the Prophet. Lo and behold, this group of Sahaba, they captured the guy. He was a leader. He was like a king in Najd, in the Najd area, Central Arabia. So when they captured him, his name was Thumama ibn Athal. Thumama, this man, when he was captured and he was brought into the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's like a jackpot. Kill him. He wants to kill our own people. Destroy him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when this man was tied to the pillar of the masjid in Nabawi, so yes, he was in the masjid, this kafir man at that time. The prophets told him, Ya Thumama ma indak. Thumama, what do you have? What do you got for us? What's the deal? He's like, the deal is simple. I have three options. That's the enemy of Islam. Look what he's saying. He said, option number one, if you want to kill me, then know that my blood is very expensive. So he's threatening the prophet while he's being tied to the pillar. Like, you kill me, you know you will not get away with this. Number two, you forgive me, then I'm a very grateful person. I will pay you back for it and I'll never forget that favor. If you want money, option three, I'll give you all the money that you want. You know how rich I am. So the Prophet da'ahu, like he basically, he left him. Then the next day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Thumama, ma indak, Thumama, today, what do you have? He's like, just like what I told you yesterday, I tell you again today, three options, you kill me, I have a big backup of people that will take care of me. Number two, you will forgive me, I'm very grateful. Number three, you want money, I'll give you everything that you want. And the Prophet left him. I want you to realize, where was he all these days? Where was he? In the masjid. So he, saw, he sees the Sahaba interacting. He sees Bilal radiallahu anhu, who was an Abyssinian slave, someone who is disrespected very much in that area being someone that people looked up to him 
you know what the people used to say about Bilal who was a slave so worthless Naam. they said worthless in the eyes of people but he's very worthy in the sight of Allah they used to say Abu Bakr is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr is our master and Bilal is our master and the way they said it Abu Bakr is our Sayyid and he freed our master Bilal radiallahu anhu look at the respect and the love so he sees that he sees the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the wonderful Imam a great example the Imam should be the best example it's a lot of pressure but the Imam should be the best non-negotiable this is a position that Allah will hold us accountable for the Prophet reading Quran may Allah make you all hear the Prophet reading Quran in Jannah Ya Rabbil Alameen so he sees all of that maybe some jokes some comments some this some halaqa third day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to him. He says, Ya Thumama, ma indak. Thumama, what's the deal today? Day three. He says, the deal of day three is like day one, like day two. Number one, you kill me. There's a lot of people that will fight back. Number two, you forgive me. I will be very grateful. Number three, you want money? I give you whatever you want. So the Prophet says, Atliqu, release him. What, Ya Rasulullah? Release him? Kill this man. He's a leader who wants to eliminate us from this earth. Release him. Let him go. This is the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happened? Thumama left the masjid. No one touched him. There's even a narration that says that they fed Thumama the food that was being done to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to honor that prisoner. So then when this man left, he went near a palm tree, took a shower, came back. He took a shower, why? He came back and when he walked into the masjid, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Sahaba were excited. This is amazing accomplishment. The king of that area in Najd became Muslim. Allahu Akbar. This man, look to what he says. He says, Ya Muhammad, there's no face that I hated more than your face. And today you're the most beloved face to me. Ya Muhammad, there's no religion I hated more than Islam. And today Islam is the most beloved religion to me. Ya Muhammad, Medina was the ugliest and worst and most city that I don't want to even pass by. And today Medina is the most beloved city to me. Ya Muhammad, from now on, I will never deal with any business with the kuffar and this and that until you give me the thumbs up, the green light that yes, I can do this, it's halal. Or no, I cannot do this because it's haram. Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him the glad tidings, the good news. What in the world did he see in 72 hours not just to be neutral, he wasn't neutral. You, know you guys are not so bad. No, you're the best. From the worst to the best within 72 hours. This was the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Number five and last one. Convey and give da'wah while focusing on the effort, not the result. Focus on what? The effort and not the result. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, in qamat ala ahadikum al qiyamat wa fi yadihi Fasila, fal yughrisha. If Yawm al Qiyamah is taking place, I want you to imagine the sky is being ripped, the oceans are turned to fire, the light of the sun is fading away, the moon is getting closer to the sun. Wajumi al Shamsu wal Qamar. Chaos. The earth is cracking. Zulzila al Ardu zilzalha. And you had a plant. What would you do? It's like run for your life. Who's going to eat from this plant? What's the point? The Prophet says, if this is all happening, the eruption of earth is taking place. The sky is being destroyed, all of that stuff. You have a plant, plant it. What does it tell you? You take the means, leave the results on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who will eat from it? That's not your business. How much will it take to grow? Leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who will benefit from it? Leave it to Allah jalla jalalu. You put the effort. Because if success is based only on results, then some of the first ones to go to hell would be prophets. Because some prophets, they come, not a single one believing in them, but they are the highest in Jannah. Why? Not results, effort. Allah says, وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ Your efforts are appreciated. وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا Allah did not focus on the results there. When it comes to the effort, Nuh السلام, many parents are here. Nuh, was he a great father or not? Without waiting for your answer, Nuh was one of the greatest fathers and parents that ever walked on earth. He's one of the best five prophets ever. But his own son was not a bad Muslim. His own son does not miss one or two salah. His son was a straight up kafir. This does not make him a bad father because your success should not be in the hands of the people. Your success should be in the effort that you put and Allah is your ultimate judge. So give da'wah, 
it's our job to give it. Number two, do it while remembering the reward Allah will give you. Do it within your capabilities and capacity. Number four, deliver the da'wah with utmost respect and good akhlaq. Number five, focus on the effort. That's where your success is at. Leave the results on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I got 12 seconds left. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.